Good morning. Grace and peace to each of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to worship here at Heritage Presbyterian Church on this Pentecost Sunday. It is good to be with you as we gather in God's name and celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit among us. As we look forward to this month, there are a few announcements to share about some upcoming activities. The first of which is on June 11th, which is this coming Saturday. Our facilities committee is hosting a work day here at the church with a variety of activities, some indoor, some out. And so you are invited to show up at, somebody give me a start time, 839. 9.30, so go get a cup of coffee and then come here at 9.30. And I'm just going to point out Tammy and Tom and others on facilities can give a wave. Um, we'll connect you with um, work. And if this Saturday doesn't work for you, but you'd like to volunteer your time or skills in some way, we have a lot of little projects and we would be happy to talk with you about one that meets your gifts. Then next Sunday is Music Sunday, the long awaited for time when our choir will lead us in worship and will interpret scripture through song. So I invite you all uh, to come with festive hearts and ready to sing next Sunday along with our choir. I unfortunately will miss that opportunity because I am leaving later this week uh, to enjoy a week of study leave um, at Montreat and I will coincide with our youth who will be there for the Montreat Youth Conference week two. Uh, so invite you all to pray for them and that'll be part of the service next week as well uh, as we are all on the road up to North Carolina. Um, and then following that week of study at Montreat, I will be spending a week on um, a vacation time with my family. Um, so if you need anything, contact Beth in the church office or your deacon or Holleen Darby, our clerk of session, um, and we will connect you all. And I look forward to coming back at the end of the month refreshed and renewed for the work of ministry. It's an exciting day for me personally because this week marks the sixth year, end of the sixth year of serving in ministry with you all, and my 13th year of ordained ministry as a minister of word and sacrament. Um, so it is an exciting day for me, especially on Pentecost, to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit and to thank you all for being a part of a place where I can serve so joyfully and live into God's call, as we all do together as Christ Church. Aware of the Spirit present and stirring among us, come, let us worship God.
God is here. Enjoy, let us stand and praise God together as we are called to, into worship. Today, we celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, dwell among us. The Spirit is the breath of life, calling life out of chaos. Come, Holy Spirit, come among us. The Spirit inspires prophets to speak and act in faith. Come, Holy Spirit, dwell among us. The Spirit breaks through the heavens, declaring Jesus is God's Son, claiming us as children of God in the waters of baptism. Come, Holy Spirit, dwell among us. The Spirit is fire and flame, giving powerful voice to disciples in the world. Come, Holy Spirit, dwell among us. The Spirit is with us today creating and inspiring, comforting and guiding, transforming and renewing. Come, Holy Spirit, dwell among us. of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us, trusting in God's faithfulness and, companion, and compassion. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. Almighty God, you poured out your spirit of together disciples, creating bold tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the force of your spirit among us. We do not listen for your word of grace, 
speak the good news of your love, or live as a people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your spirit and the thoughts with flaming desire to be filled, doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Do not fear, says the Lord, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. God is doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of power and grace, fill us with, your, with the wisdom of your word and the understanding of your spirit, so that we may be your church, a people with dreams and visions at work in all the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Psalm 104, verses 24 through 35. Let us listen to the word of God. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The church is full of your creatures. There is the sea, great and wide, creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go ships and the Leviathan, that you form to sport in it. These are all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my May my meditation be pleasing to him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord.
Our second scripture reading today comes from Acts in chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. Let us continue to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire home where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and prophesites. Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last May, in the midst of the pandemic, my family and I made a stealth trip over to Huntsville, Alabama, presents in hand. We were there to surprise my great aunt Colleen for her birthday. She arrived at my parents' house, assuming she was just going to visit them for lunch, and out popped two little boys yelling, surprise. The next day, she came back thinking she would visit us again before we headed home, only to find the party had increased by four more as my brother and his wife and children arrived to share in the celebration. Another surprise. After all, we thought turning 90 was a pretty exciting milestone and worth celebrating. But whether you're turning 90 or 65, 21, or 8, any other number, in fact, birthdays are often marked in pretty special ways. They're gatherings with friends and family. We have special trips or days marked with our favorite activities or other ways to make it special. And of course, often there's cake or a similar treat. Now, if you're turning one year old, you tend to get a cake entirely to yourself, with which you are instructed to eat it with your hands as a smash cake. I've heard it offered recently that everyone, no matter their age, should get such a delight on their birthday. Today is Pentecost. It's the 50th day after Easter, and it's the day we mark as the birthday of the church. We hear the story of that first day of Pentecost, how the whoosh of the Holy Spirit, the life force of God, sweeps in and surrounds those early believers in Acts, 
how the Spirit breaks barriers of language and translation and breaks open the good news of the gospel to all who have ears to hear it in Jerusalem. The prophet Joel's prophecies are fulfilled, and God's people are alive and moving with vision, dream, and a spirit with an ever-widening circle that seeks to bring them to life. Pentecost marks a moment of new life for the body of Christ, and it seeks to reflect the fullness of the kingdom of God. It's about good news that catches on like literal fire as the Spirit lingers among them. Now, this first story of Pentecost is a pretty big party event, isn't it? In fact, it's kind of tough to top. After such an amazing pull-out-all-the-stops spectacle, how are we as the church meant to compete with that grand celebration some 2,000 years ago? There would be a lot more candles on that cake, to be sure. But I'm not so sure that's the kind of fire we're supposed to be lighting today. And I think the fire marshal would agree. So then what should we do? Do we just wear a bunch of red and decorate things a little bit more? Maybe sing a little louder and more joyfully? Dare we dance a little in worship? Maybe this day is about something more than just a celebration. We might consider birthdays as a time to reflect and reminisce. With fondness, we hear people recount the early stories of their heyday years full of life and energy. We laugh as stories of childhood antics are told and we remember the adventures we took on a whim. What would such a journey look like for us as a congregation or as the greater church of Jesus Christ? Our memories stretch back to those later stories in the book of Acts and other accounts in the early church's life. At our Pentecost party, would we say, hey, you remember that time that Paul was preaching and that young man, Eutychus, fell asleep and then fell out of the window of the church? What about that earthquake that freed Paul and Silas from jail? Only then they and the prisoners remained and then the guard and his family came to faith and were baptized. Would we then go on to name the ebbs and the flows of the church's life, perhaps carefully sidestepping some of those historically troubling moments when the church hasn't exactly been her best? Would we name famous theologians and others who have influenced our understanding of who God is? Would we identify miracles, not just ancient, but modern? All of this is a tempting path as we celebrate the birthday of the church. There's a plethora of options of stories to choose from. But if we just lingered here, I think we miss some of the Pentecost story. For in this story, in an instant, the Holy Spirit acts like that mama bird pushing the proverbial church out of the nest to let it fly on its own. Pentecost is not about resting in the safety of what has been or even about what is. It's about being plummeted into a future of possibility with a new direction. There's a trend I've been a part of at several children's first birthday parties. They invite those who are attending to write the child a note card that then goes in a jar or envelope and meant to be opened by the child on their 18th birthday. It's a time to express your hopes and dreams for who the little one might be in the future. On Pentecost, I wonder if the Spirit might just inspire us to do something similar. So let's try it out together. I didn't bring note cards, so we'll just have to do it out loud. I invite you to get caught up in the rush of inspiration to dream and imagine for a moment, even dare say prophesy or vision, where God is calling the church. It can be a specific thing in this congregation or as general as our broadest understanding of the church of Jesus Christ, what the Apostles' Creed would call that holy Catholic church. But in this year of our Lord, 2022, what would it mean for our church to be brimming with the energy of the Holy Spirit? How might we look and sound to others who observe us? Just as the Spirit sparked on the tongues of all those gathered today, I invite you to engage in this work together. 
I'll make it easy for you. Call out a word or a phrase. It can be an adjective or something similar that describes your hopes for how the church might be and where the spirit might be at work. It's okay if you overlap one another. I'm sure they did on Pentecost too. Outreach. Outreach. Renew. Love. Unity. Love. Consideration. Consideration. Involvement. Involvement. Mission. Mission. Grace. Grace. listen. And if you are worshiping with us online on YouTube today, you can type your words in the chat field and share it that way. Compassion. Acceptance. Acceptance. Inclusion. 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 Affirming. Unity. Unity. Empathy. A few weeks ago, I asked our session and deacons to engage in a very similar exercise. We named our hopes for the coming year together, and here's some of the words they included laughter, exciting. Togetherness, flexibility, normalcy, whatever that is, challenging, vision, growth, focus, resourceful, adaptive, joy, forward, continued adaptability. And then we took it one more step. We considered what would it take for us to accomplish these things, to live into the vision the Spirit was giving us. The list sounded like this, open-mindedness, communication, patience, vision, persistence and dedication, thoughtfulness, energy, mindfulness, collaboration, a song in your heart, good judgment, sharing, cooperation, and purpose. Friends, these words, these visions and images, I believe, are signs of the Holy Spirit at work and on the move in our midst. They are gifts that have been given to us, ready to be unpacked and shared. There are callings to be a witness to God's transforming and amazing love through Jesus Christ our Lord, to those who just might be listening in. They are radical and revolutionary, They're the big kind of picture things that might prompt those who hear them at first to wonder if we have lost our minds to take such an ambitious leap of faith. But I think that in part is the point of Pentecost, to dare to dream dreams that are as big as God, and indeed perhaps only possible with God's help. In the story of Acts, languages tumble out. So that the diverse crowd who has come to Jerusalem for celebration, speaking all sorts of languages, all have access to the good news of Christ's resurrection. The Spirit breaks open the church to new relationships and new avenues, new ways of being. So I wonder today, do we have the same faith, the kind that allows the Spirit to work even now? What new works might the Spirit be calling us to? In what new ways might we speak God's language of love for those here in Cherokee and Cobb counties and beyond? On this birthday celebration of the church, do we dare to take part in the party that the Spirit brings? Are we willing to loosen our grip for just a moment on things done decently and in order, in order to let the Spirit work among us? I hope so. I hope today as we continue to worship that we can get caught up in the joy that the Spirit brings to us even this morning. And I want you to imagine for a moment that we are indeed part of this grand birthday celebration 
with a mountain of candles in front of us. While we won't light all of those candles, there are some birthday candles here on the communion table. And I invite you to take one with you, if you like, as you come forward today. To light it on your own and remember the spark and the flame God has given to each of us to share Christ's light with the world. In just a few moments, we will share in singing and proclamation of who God is and the glorious feast God has prepared for us. May we bring with it a Pentecostal spirit, wild and free, joyful and festive. May you imagine yourself at God's birthday table, that cake in front of you, being asked for just a moment to look around and take it all in. The singing and the birthday hats and the revelry and the closing of our eyes and making a wish for what is to come. On Pentecost, it's the Holy Spirit that provides the breath that blows through us and carries us into what's next. So come. Let's celebrate God at work together. I invite you to stand and sing in joy as we join together in singing happy birthday to the church. Amen. Let us continue to play and be joyful and festive as we sing our hymns. I invite you to remain as you are as we affirm our faith. We trust in God the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. 
In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. You may be seated. In response to all God has done for us and moved by the power of the Spirit, we offer ourselves. We offer our financial gifts to sustain the work God does with us as a church together. We thank you for those gifts that are sent to our church office from your bank or electronically through our online giving, as well as for those who are given here in person at our offering box located in the narthex. All of these enable us to continue to function together as a church community and to live into the Spirit's calling. We also give thanks for the way the Spirit calls many into service, for those who serve as leaders and volunteers, for those who give time on their own, who offer time from home, who offer their prayers. All of these are ways in which we are the church together. In celebration of being the church together, I invite you to stand and I will invite the children who are with us. Can you all help distribute these balloons that are in the center and get them into the pews for everyone during our doxology? All right, let us stand and sing. seated. Friends, this is God's table of celebration. Scripture tells us this is meant to be the joyful feast of the people of God, where people will come from north and from south, from east and from west, to sit at table together in the kingdom of God. It is a table where all are welcome, all are included, all are wrapped in God's love. So come, Take a part in the celebration which Christ himself has prepared. Let us pray together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Great creator, we rejoice that you have summoned all things into being, breathing into us the breath of life, and setting us on the earth that we might proclaim your mighty acts in every language. Even when we've lost our way, you call us back to you, guiding us and reviving us again and again. And so today, with all of your creation and the faithful of every time and place, we sing the glory of your name. Loving Redeemer, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Conceived by the Spirit and born of Mary, he came to live among us. At his baptism, you broke through the heavens like a dove and declared him your beloved. You empowered him to serve the poor, proclaim freedom from sin's bondage, and befriend the friendless and the outcast. When he breathed his last upon a cross, you raised him from the tomb, breaking the power of death and opening the way to eternal life. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Sustainer and advocate, pour out your spirit upon us and these gifts of bread and cup as we celebrate with joy the good news of Christ's resurrection. Accept this as our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Set our hearts aflame with a love for the truth and the desire to do your will. Make our witness to Christ burn brightly and keep us faithful until Christ comes in final victory and we shall feast with all of your saints in the joy of your earthly realm. 
Come, Holy Spirit, for we long to be made one with each other and with you, giving all glory and honor to our almighty God through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I don't know about you, but in my family, when we have a grand celebration, it means people gather a little closer. So I want to invite our children to come gather with me at the table to bring that joyful energy just like we gather around. Because this is the table which Christ sat with his disciples. And he sat with them as friends. And you know what? I bet they laughed. I bet they shared stories. I bet they talked about all the things that were going to happen. And at some point when they were sharing that meal, he took bread. And he broke it and gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And after they had shared in that meal, he took the cup. And he gave it to them saying, this cup is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember God's story. And we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord. And we look forward to that day when we are all gathered at a much bigger table with all of God's people in every time and in every place when Christ returns and we are all together as one family of God. That is the joy of this meal. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Will you all help me invite everyone to come forward to the table? Friends, as we celebrate today, you are invited to come forward following our children and cup your hands to receive the bread and then to take a cup of juice. The center table is gluten-free. And if you need us to come to you in your pew, just lift your hand and we're happy to do so. All is ready. Let us share in the feast.
Let us pray. God of all might and power, you have filled us in body and in spirit with this holy feast that we might be the body of Christ in the world. Send us out with the power of a mighty wind. Open the horizons of our minds by the flame of your wisdom. Loosen our tongues to show your praise, for it is only in your spirit that we can voice your words of peace and acclaim Jesus as Lord. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand as we prepare to go out into the world. To remember on this birthday of the church how God sends flame to descend on us. How God's spirit dwells within each of us. And how God invites us to make a wish, a dream, a vision for a better world. And then work with God to pursue it. Go now in peace, living into the fullness of God's vision for our world. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today, tomorrow, and always. Amen.